Hi, welcome to La Rosa Reads. I am Denise La Rosa, and today I will be sharing with all of my fellow book lovers my April TBR. Let's talk books. I'm really digging these TBRs, and I cannot believe that we are at the April TBR. I remember starting these in January and thinking, well, actually not really thinking, just doing it and wondering what's gonna happen with this? How is this all gonna shake out? And here we are for number four in the year of 2022. So what I'm discovering is that I start off with the best of intentions and because I'm a mood reader, Things end up happening that maybe weren't in the plans. Things that were in the plans end up not happening. And then my wrap-ups look quite different than my TBRs. And that's okay because, you know, we're book readers, book lovers, and it happens. So I'm really proud of this TBR. This one is perhaps my favorite TBR thus far because I have an eclectic mix. I have so many different genres. I have classics. I have romance. I have young adult. I have, mm, what else? Of course, fiction. It's good. Collections of poetry. I think this is going to diversify my reading experience and that makes it so enjoyable. So first up will be my collections of poetry that I plan on reading this month, starting with I hope this finds you well, Poems by Kate Bear. I mentioned this in my New York City book haul video where I visited Strand, so I'm not gonna go into too many de details. So many things drew me to this book. The simplicity of the cover, the title was just so pleasant and positive. And then as I read the synopsis, I was like, wow, this is gonna be dynamic. So basically, Kate is an author and being an online personality, having a presence online has led her to having these experiences with people that range from them giving her advice and comp being complimentary to being downright rude and cruel. And so she takes those dark moments and turns them into beautiful prose. And I think that's really special and something that I could connect with. So yeah, excited to read this one. The next collection of poetry I have is titled, oh, first of all, look at that cover love it it's titled bless the daughter raised by a voice in her head by warson shire now don't judge me but i have never seen beyonce's lemonade video but now i really want to see it because apparently warson shire's poetry was a part of the lemonade video and that whole experience and so i'm really curious to see how beyonce's artistry meshes with Shire's prose. I'm really excited. So this book uncovers a specific type of black woman experience where you have an individual, a black woman who really has to discover womanhood and learn about being a woman on her own. She doesn't really have the mentors, the relatives surrounding her to support her with that journey. And that's something that I have to say, I was blessed to have many women, many powerful, strong, resilient, loving, encouraging black women in my life to help shape who I am. And so I'm really curious to see what this type of black woman experience and journey brings about creatively speaking when it comes to the the poems so i can't wait so y'all i have caught the jasmine guillory bug i am loving jasmine guillory in december i read the royal holiday and was just in the mood for something festive and romantic in the december month and then i found myself wanting to read all of her wedding date series books and I had quite a few of you say, slow your roll, Denise. You need to start with the wedding date, the first one, and go in order. Even though each book can be read and is a standalone on its own, you guys were telling me that there are characters that are sprinkled throughout all of these books. And if you read them in order, you appreciate the characters and their stories much better than if you were to just sporadically read the books. So I read the wedding date in January and now next up is the proposal that is book two in the wedding date series. I believe we're following Carlos who was friends with the um, 
main male character in The Wedding Date. I loved his character in The Wedding Date. I thought he was, um, he was just a fun, cool, quirky, hilarious kind of guy. I found him to be really relatable and likable. So the fact that this book is going to be centered on his own love story sounds really exciting to me. And yeah, we've got baseball season, all the things that like give me spring vibes. I'm here for it. So this is a book that I checked out of the library quite a while ago and it is due. However, they keep letting me renew it and I gotta get to this thing. It is The Story of More, How We Got to Climate Change and Where to Go From Here by Hope Jarin. I believe I said Hope's name correctly. And this is an adaptation for young adults. And for those of you who are around for my winter book haul, I brought this book up and was excited because I teach a ninth grade integrated studies course called Voice and Vision. And a lot of those students are really engaged and interested in learning more about how to be activists as far as environmental justice is concerned. And so this is a book that I want to read for my own learning and growth as well as sharing with them. And hopefully we can do something with this book before the end of the year. And if not, I'll try to make plans in my curriculum to make that happen next year. But hopefully we'll get to it. And then there was Passing by Nella Larson. This book, you guys, this book. <laughs> oh God, I promise myself, I promise all of you that I will get to this book passing. So those of you who have been with La Rosa Reads from the beginning, I feel like I every once in a while will bring up passing the book. Um, I keep saying I want to read it. Those of you who just know me personally, I've had it on my TBR for the longest. And I am determined, Dagnabbit, to read it this month and watch the Netflix, the Netflix film. Netflix film. I promise you I'll get to it. If I do nothing else with this stack of books over here, I'm gonna read Passing. My library folks are going to just be so done with me. This is yet another book that I checked out quite some time ago, but I am really thrilled to say that our library system here where I live is really kind and really wanting people to check out books. So you have automatic renewals, there's not fees or fines or anything like that, but I don't wanna be like hoarding books and preventing people from reading books just because they're collecting dust over at my house. So here we have another book that I checked out quite some time ago, and it's a classic. It's titled The Prince and the Pauper by Mark Twain. I have never read The Prince and the Pauper, and Olive over at A Book Olive encouraged me, inspired me to read more classics. She has a classics video of like the classic books that she hasn't read yet that she's hoping to read this year. And this was one of her books as well as mine. And so I thought, hey, I need to do this. Olive's doing it and I love me some Olive, so here we are. I don't think there's much to say about this book that isn't already known and if you don't know, you can figure that out on your own, I guess. Like, it's a classic, right? So, you know, this is one of those stories that is referenced a lot um, in various ways and in various moments and platforms and conversations. And so I'm just excited to actually read it myself. I believe this one has some illustrations. Um, this reminds me of books from when I was in elementary and middle school. I feel like this one was probably published at that time. So we do have some illustrations, you know, larger text, which makes me happy. So I am excited to read this. I hope to get to it this month. Oh, now this book, you guys, has a very special place in my heart. This book actually went from Oprah Winfrey's hands to mine, and it is The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck. For those of you who have watched my video that I did explaining how I became Oprah's A plus reader in September of 2004, you know that your girl didn't get a car, but I did get 
The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck. And for a book lover, you know, not too bad. So Pearl S. Buck is from West Virginia. I am a West Virginian. I'm so proud of my state. And I get really frustrated and angry and fed up with people spewing out negative stereotypes and untruths about us as a people in our state. And so anytime there's someone from West Virginia that does good in the world and um, puts out positive energy into the world, I just want to support them. And I've never read a book by Pearl S. Buck. Shame on me. But I am looking forward to finally reading this one. I was gifted this as a freebie when I was on the Oprah show. And I just dug it out of my storage closet. And yeah, I, I'm going to do this because it is April and Earth Day is in April. And we're talking about the good Earth. I thought it would be a good time to do this. So let's see. So The Stranger in the Lifeboat, written by Mitch Album, is a book that one of my friends from West Virginia that I grew up with had posted on Facebook and was super excited. She had just finished reading the book and was so moved by it that she wanted to share it with her Facebook friends and she highly recommended it. She has great recommendations. She is a very well-read woman. And so I immediately went to the store and got my own copy. I never read Tuesdays with Maury and this is the author of Tuesdays with Maury. So this will be my first book by this author and it feels like it's gonna give me some melancholy vibes. I wanna kinda of stay up and, you know, springy <laughs> in April, but at the same time, I think there's room for something that's a little more emotional. So we shall see what happens. So this is a book I recently purchased at Barnes & Noble at my most recent book haul, and trust me, there are many book hauls at my local Barnes & Noble and my local favorite indie bookstores. So <laughs> out of one of those many trips, this is a book that I purchased. I knew nothing about it beforehand, but apparently we have two young women, this woman on the front and this woman on the back, and they are sisters who discover each other for the first time in their teenage years. And from there, I think they're going to explore the idea of switching roles. And it's kind of cute. It just seems like a cute read. I mean, it's a thick read. This is going to be probably one of my longest reads. Yeah, it's 455 pages. So if I get to this book, it's going to be one of my longer ones that I read for April. But I have a feeling it will go by quickly. I see ballet, like um, like I see some ballet vibes here. We have trophies, we have the point shoes, we have a leotard. And for me, being a former dancer, I just am excited. I'm excited to read anything that has to do with the performing arts. So. It's long, but I think it will be good. Last but not least, I am late to this party, but better late than never. I have Black Cake, written by Charmaine Wilkerson. This is a novel that was a Read with Jenna selection. I purchased it the month that Jenna made it a Read with Jenna selection, but then it just has been sitting around. I don't know. I think I had so many other books that I was in the mood for reading and this one just didn't draw me in until recently. So I think that this will also be a rather long read but also a quick one. I just feel it in my bones. So we have 385 pages and here it says we can't choose what we inherit but we can choose who we become. So we're de dealing with um, someone who passes away, Eleanor Bennett, and she leaves behind a puzzling inheritance for her two children, Byron and Benny. And that takes them on a journey that grapples with family, family drama. Let's see what else. Um, Will their mother's revelations bring them back together or leave them feeling more lost than ever? So there's uh, this is a heartbreaking tale. Um, there's secrets that Eleanor still was holding back. And there's a mystery of a long lost child that challenged everything the siblings thought they knew about their lineage and themselves. So this is rich. This is like, I think this is going to be a very rich story full of lessons to be learned, 
full of nuance. The characters, I think, are going to be complex and um, you're going to, I feel like this is a character driven book. So yeah, to think that I will get to both of these books in April is a little overly ambitious. Um, if I had to pick one to read for April and let one go as of this very moment, I would pick Better Together to read because we're in the month of April, we're, get, we're getting close to the end of the school year. And for me being in the field of education, this is a busy time of the year. And so I think I would aim for a lighter read at this particular point in time. And then I would dive into a book like Black Cake over the summer whenever I can just chillax and also be emotional and, you know, take it all in. But you know, that's how I'm feeling right now on this very windy, breezy day. Who knows what I'll be feeling whenever it comes time for me to choose which book I'm going to read. So a lot of my April TBR books are from my Barnes & Noble book haul video as well as my New York City book haul video. So I would love for you to check those out if you haven't already. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.